Today we're going to be unboxing this color checker passport for video. Color control for video from capture to edit. Now I recently picked this up just so <clears throat> I can maximize uh, the potential for uh, my video work and as so many cameras out there and different types of lenses, you know, this tool help uh, in so many ways as far as uh, color grading, color balancing, gray balancing, setting perfect, setting, setting perfect exposure, color matching multiple cameras and shooting, editing for mixed lighting. So let's go on and unbox this. So if you've ever tried to shoot with different kinds of cameras <clears throat> and different kinds of lenses, you'll notice that when you're looking at the footages, a lot of times the colors are all different. And so if you also edit and the monitor is not calibrated, that will also um, make the colors different and the results different. Having this will have a guideline as far as a proper exposure and a guide to properly correct it. And <clears throat> this is a Calibrite Color Checker Passport. And then uh, <clears throat> let's go on and uh, just kind of walk through. Now, there's cer certain things that you shouldn't do with this uh, color checker. Don't expose it to too bright light too long. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you shouldn't touch the inside of this thing because fingertips and, and, and oils can affect the results of this. Um, this right here, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is specifically good for the video aspects. So whenever you're grading, you uh, mask this out and you can determine the levels that you need to start working with. And uh, there's also a grayscale that you can use, which I'm not trying to touch this part right here. And this is this part is to calibrate the, the monitor. For this part of the grayscale, you can target like the white balance. Uh, you know, this way it can uh, balance out the footages whenever you're in post. Um, you know, in photography, I uh, actually pick on the grayscale to help actually choose the color um, balance behind it. Sometimes if you're too uh, <clears throat> orange or if you're too more on the bluish side, you know, you put, you choose uh, like the grayscale uh, or even the white. I've done balancing that way. If you take the time to color balance the footage uh, during the shoot, it'll speed up the post process a lot faster. Imagine not having this and you're working with several different cameras. The editor and the colorist, uh, you know, they're going to have a hard time matching that up. Now, if you just reference some of these tools here, it's going to actually speed up the post process. So having this on set, whenever you actually um, starting to shoot, you shoot with this and you move it around. So that way you get different kind of lights to it. And then in post, like I said, you key this out and then you'll get... Uh, the, the range that you would need to work with. And so that will give you a guide for all the footages to work with. Also having this, because we're accustomed to looking at several different monitors from TV, computer monitors, laptop, tablets, even smartphones, uh, if the color is off, you know, all the results from all those um, mediums are going to be different in how they, they showcase the, the final results. But if you have one guide to actually measure across the board, that way it'll be consistent with the colors. Now, it's just depending on the type of medium you're working with, at least you know you have the specific colors that you're working with if you use this approach. Now, like I said, this is specifically for video. Now, I also do stills work, and the way I started with stills work is I actually have these old gray cards, and I still use them on set. So they're quite con like convenient as far as how I use them. I usually have um, the talent just hold this in front and just slightly moving it, and then in the waveforms and the scopes, I can see the IRE on these grace cards and I can tell 
the proper exposure when I use these things, when I'm using it with a uh, field monitor. So this actually still has a value for me when I'm actually doing videos and for photos. So, you know, this thing has made a big difference in a lot of my work and post-processing. I'm going to show you my oldest passport by uh, X-Rite. I probably have had this for maybe about ooh, 10 years now. And it's done wonders for me for stills work. Uh, I would not use this for video, even though you technically can on certain parts, uh, like adjusting the white balance. I've used it before on a on a on a um, a shoot where if I needed to adjust the white balance, I can just choose the the whitest part of this, and then that will uh, <clears throat> speed it up in post processing. And then you also have the gray cards here to expose to that. So. But now that I have for photography, I have for video. So like like I said, whenever you have uh, shots and everything's locked in, you're satisfied with your um, exposure that you think you want to work with, have this in front of the subject matter and just move it around different lights. So that way you get different, uh, uh, as far as the lights landing on this passport okay that's just something brief I wanted to talk about um, maybe I'll do a video on how we we work with it in post-production and uh, this this helps a lot and in, in in a lot of my work for for the editors and myself when I do editing uh, this helps me um, speed up the process so I'm kind of glad I have this passport checker now for video okay uh, if you guys have any questions down below in the comments i did provide a link to amazon on this product if you decide to click on that link it will take you to amazon and if you decide to purchase uh, anything from the link i will get a small commission as i am an uh, associate with amazon all right thank you very much thanks for watching